For this next compositing project, we're going to take this image here and transform it from day to night and add a magical glow. How cool is that? All right, so let's go ahead and get started by opening up this image from your section six folder. And let's go ahead and start off by duplicating this layer and calling it night because that's the first thing we're going to do is transform it from day to night. And we're going to do that by going up to colors and selecting colorize. Now for this, I'm going to add a light blue color. So I'm going to use this color right here. And here's the hexadecimal number. If you want to use the same color, go ahead and type that in. And let's go ahead and grab this layer next and duplicate again. And let's move it above the other layer. What we're going to do now is separate our deer from the background with our foreground selection tool, which is what I used originally for this project when I was putting this together. And then I used the quick mask mode to fine tune my selection. Now you've seen me do this several times throughout the class and you've already practiced a few times as well. So there's no need for me to go through how to use this particular tool again, since you already know how to use it. So I'm going to save you and me some time by cheating a little bit. I'm going to grab my layer mask here that I've already done. And I'm going to add it to this document. So go ahead and duplicate that layer and make your selection and then apply a layer mask based on a selection. Once you have that, you should end up with this. Now we're going to take this layer and we're going to duplicate that one and right click on it and apply the layer mask. Now the background has been removed. So what we need to do now is we need to match the color of the light in the background with the foreground because he's being lit with daylight. It's a different color than the nighttime light. So let's go back up to colors, colorize and apply that same blue color. All right, let's duplicate this layer and let's call it antlers. And we're going to make a selection of the antlers and remove everything else. So let's grab our free select tool, which is right here, or you can grab it with the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter F. And I'm just going to draw around the antlers like so. And let's go around this ear right here so it's not included. And then go ahead and finish off by going back to where you started. We need to invert our selection and then hit your delete key or your backspace key. And that should leave you with just the antlers. All right, so we're going to start working on our glow of the antlers. So let's go ahead and put this first set of antlers inside of a layer group. And we're also going to change the color from blue to a yellowish orangish color. I'm going to do that by going up to colors, hue saturation, and I'm going to drop the hue all the way down to minus 180. Let's go ahead and grab our zoom tool here and zoom in because I forgot to do this little piece in the center. This is a little bit of a gap between the antlers and it shouldn't be glowing yellow. It should include the background or at least show the background through it. So I'm going to grab my eraser tool, which is right here. The keyboard shortcut is shift plus E. And let's just go ahead and erase this because we're not going to need this back later anyways. Otherwise, I would use a layer mask. Doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to do some blurring of the antlers to create the glow. So don't worry about making it perfect. All right, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and I'm going to duplicate this set of antlers and I'm going to call this glow one because we're going to do this a couple more times. And let's go up to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to set the blur amount to, I don't know, what do you think? I think I'm going to go pretty high here around 80 to 90. So maybe let's go in the middle, 85. All right, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer now and let's call this glow two. Let's go up to filters and repeat that Gaussian blur. I also want to change the blending mode to dodge. And that's too intense now. So I'm going to drop the opacity down to around 30 or so. So maybe right about there. And let's go ahead and grab our original antlers again, duplicate it and move it all the way up to the top. And let's blur it again, but not as much as before. I think this time right around five to 10. So I'm going to go with six. Now there's one thing that's bugging me. I think the background should be darker than the foreground. So let's go back to our night layer here. And let's recolorize that with a darker blue. So 
Now let's see, let's try this one or even darker. I think I like the darker one because the deer stands out a little bit better now. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. And I think we need to do one more thing with the antlers here. I think I wanna bring the glow to opacity up a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab my layer group and drop the opacity of this one down to kind of tone down everything just a little bit. So right about there looks pretty good. All right, let's go ahead and collapse this layer group. So the next step is applying this glow color on the deer itself since it should be reflecting off of his body. So we're gonna target the highlights of the deer and we're going to apply the edit more towards the top or where the antlers are closer to his body. So down here, it's going to be less of a glow or less of that color. So to do that, we're gonna grab this layer here. We're going to duplicate it. I'm gonna rename this Glow Highlights. Let's go ahead and colorize the deer with that color that we used previously, this light orange color. And then we're going to add a black layer mask to remove it. And then we can paint on with our brush where we want it. And I'm using a low opacity of around 15 to 20. So I can gradually build up the edit where I want it and kind of create a smooth transition from one part to another and that's going to create some depth as well. So I'm gonna go pretty heavy up here on the top and near the antlers because that's where the antlers are closest to is this part of the body. So it should be brighter over here compared to other parts of his body. And again, I'm just targeting the different highlights on his body, which makes it a little easier to kind of target where to place everything. So I'm gonna go really dark in here with lots of strokes. And I'm gonna go with the larger brush now so I can begin feathering this color down a little bit. There we go. So now you can see it's starting to feather in. We probably really shouldn't have any down there, maybe a little bit on this part of his leg here because it's kind of protruding out a little bit and it might get a little bit more light than other parts of his body. And maybe a little bit on his legs over here, but not as much. And then just go ahead and continue feathering this in until you're happy with the final results. I'm gonna go ahead and go with a smaller brush now to get his eyes here a little bit more because it's really close to the antlers and I think this should be pretty bright in this area. And of course, if you add too much, you can always paint with black to remove it and tone it down if needed. Now, the other thing you can do if you wanna speed this up and make this a little bit darker is you can come down here and duplicate this layer. And I think that's a little bit too much now, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop the opacity down just to add a little bit more than what we had previously. So there's the original and then the extra. So you can do more or less depending on your personal preference. Let's go back to the antlers here. I'm gonna duplicate this layer and I'm gonna turn this layer off and then I'm going to right click on the antlers and select merge layer group because what I wanna do is I wanna tone this down. It's not exactly the same color that I had previously. So I don't remember all the exact steps I did. So your rendition and your final edit may be different than mine because you may choose different colors throughout the process and I didn't write down the exact colors that I used here. But I do wanna tone this down because I find it's a little bit too saturated and I'm gonna go up to colors, saturation. Actually, let's go to hue saturation because I prefer that tool over the other one. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down a little bit so right around minus 40 to minus 50 yeah that's too much i like that much better all right so the last step is to add some stars to our gluing so navigate to the section 6 folder and drag that over to create a new layer and again you can go up to file open as layers if that doesn't work for you now with the move tool i'm gonna go ahead and move this up so it covers up those antlers all together so I think right there will be good. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a black layer mask and then I can begin painting in the stars exactly where I want them. And make sure you have white selected to paint that on. You can add as many or as few stars as you want. I'll leave that up to you. Now there's one more thing we need to do. We need to tone this down just a little bit because it's a little bit too bright, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my black now and paint with that with a lower opacity. And I'm gonna begin painting in some different strokes here to tone this down a little bit. So we're left with 
just a few stars, not too many, and I don't want that big white glow in some of these areas here, and this will help tone that down. Now, depending on the colors you chose, if you have a really dark background, you may want to change the blending mode to either screen, darken only, multiply, or something else to help blend those colors in. Also, depending on the stars you chose, if you're choosing something else, you may need to choose a different blending mode to help that blend in with the background. The other thing you can do is you can go to your levels tool here to adjust Actually, we need to go back and select the image layer here and then adjust the white and the black points to try and darken it up that way so we can brighten up these stars by going to the left here. That's a little bit too far. And then you can darken it up some more this way and that might help blend it in a little bit more as well. But now I'm starting to see an outline here and that's why you may want to go in and choose a blending mode to try and get that to blend in a little bit better. So here's the original and the final edits.